Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll free number, 800 951 The website at allamericangold.com. And I, I hope you had uh, a great weekend. Uh, I know this, it was hotter than you know what out there here in Arizona. We broke every record. Uh, most days over 115 degrees. Most days over 110 degrees. Most days were the low. Never got below 90, and uh, it looks like it's going to continue every day this week. There's a chance. There's a chance that on Thursday and Friday it may only get to 109. So uh, we got that to look forward to. But don't worry, our time's coming. Our time's coming. Give us a few more months, and uh, we'll be bragging about how beautiful it is here, and everybody else will be frozen to the water pipes. Uh, but, man, what a difference a day makes. And, and once again, gold and silver on the rise. You know, you got to buy the dip. I keep telling you, buy these dips. They won't last that long. Uh, gold's up almost $50 today. Silver's up uh, almost a dollar and a half today. Uh, the dollar uh, back under pressure. Just, you know, again, as we suspected, the dollar having trouble going anywhere. Uh, 92.80 again. So right there at that 92.80 level. Uh, I've been talking about that level for well over a month now. And, and you start thinking about all the all the, the debt and the spending. And, and you saw... Last week, we saw that 10-year note rallying without the dollar rally. And, and today, uh, the 10-year note is falling back down again, uh, 674. So the 10-year note kind of saying, okay, we give up. The dollar is going to be heading lower, uh, and, and I think it's going to be heading significantly lower. A lot of people out there now, Talking about how big is the debt going to be. And we're not talking about this year. Listen, just write $30 trillion in there. For uh, the first time since World War II. Now, World War II, that was a long, long time ago. You know, I, uh, I'm i 50 now. I hit the big 5-0, uh, 50 years old. And for the first time since World War II, the government is going to exceed more than double the amount of of revenue that they bring in. You know, when you think about uh, the government bringing in revenues of somewhere in that $3 trillion range. Now, again, that's depending on uh, if we don't have the payroll tax cut. If we got a payroll tax cut, that number's going to be, uh, you know, somewhere around 2.7, something like that. But uh, over $3 trillion in the government spending uh, is going to exceed six. I think it's actually, we have a chance. I mean, it's crazy to think about this, but we could spend eight to ten trillion dollars in one year. In one year, you know, think about it. that. You know, the total of the U.S. economy is twenty trillion. So we just spend forty to fifty percent of the entire economy. Uh, the way things are headed, you know, yet last week we talked about how uh, the the Democrats left town. Nancy Pelosi wants them to come back to save the post office. Uh, they, they they need $25 billion. And, and I'm just, uh, all the, the mail-in vote, the voting thing. L- listen, if we are this lazy, is this how lazy we've gotten? Is this it? You know what? Forget about it. Let, let's just give up all of our freedoms right now. Let's just go straight communist. Right, we, we, you mean to tell me we can't one day put a mask on and go vote? That's what you're saying. We've got to, we got to do it through the mail, which the post office can't do it. UPS says they can't do it. FedEx says they can't do it. Uh, and of course, if we want to do it, it's just going to cost a gazillion dollars. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, no checks and balances. I don't know. It just doesn't sound like a very good idea to me. That's just me. You know, I know a lot of people, you guys love the convenience thing. Be very, very, very leery of anything that comes out of the government that is going to make your life convenient. Because it's always followed up with a loss of our freedoms. And, and I'm telling you, this is just absolutely no different. 
And, and again, they always got to have a crisis to do it. Oh, it's coronavirus. That's what we got to mail it. Everybody mail You know, we're just going to send, what if, you know, just send two, three, four ballots to every mailbox. You know, be simple. Um, and, of course, the fact that, the, or that the, the post office can't make any money. Now, you think about uh, Amazon and all these others and, and now uh, – all the mail, that, now of course, now let's face it, right? The mail is getting less and less because of coronavirus. Uh, it ain't been trending that way. It's mostly just junk mail. You used to have a mailbox for every person's house. Now you got the community mailboxes. And, and of course, the problem really is legacy costs, right? Pensions, uh, too generous of pay packets, you know, typical government stuff. Uh, and now they need even more bailouts. And this is the problem. This is what we're fighting. Uh, do, we, do we want to provide funds to deal with the coronavirus? Or do we want funds that deal with coronavirus and all the other bad mistakes that the government has made? And that's, what the, that's the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. The Democrats want to use it. Hey, let's just bail it all out, right? Hey, we're spending quadrillions anyway. What's the difference? I got news for you. I really do. Sooner or later, we're all going to get their money. Uh, we're going to talk about how big is the debt going to get. This isn't my predictions, by the way. We'll be back right after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. All kinds of records being set. Just everywhere, right? We've got record high debt levels. We've got record high uh, federal balance sheets. And, and now we're talking about how high is it going to get. And, and the numbers really, it, it, it's, it's starting to get a little creepy as, as we start to figure out how much money is it going to cost? How big are the deficits uh, going to be? I've already told you, you know, pencil in $30 trillion. You know, it's so funny. What was it, six months ago? The CBO said, oh, we're not going to hit $30 trillion until 2030. Of course, I told you that was ridiculous. But, you know, that's, that's why we, you know, spend money on these organizations like the Congressional Budget Office. Uh, they should have been stripped of all of their funding after that nonsense. Uh, but, but more and more people now are starting to pay attention to exactly what it is that, that I've been saying for a long time, which is the spending train, this, you know, the, the hairy figgy, you know, the hockey stick, bankruptcy 1995. You know, Eric used to have that hanging up in our studios for, for the longest time, you know, and, and he was right. He just was off by a little bit. Uh, there's this uh, super tyrannical right-wing publication. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, it's called Forbes, Forbes magazine, you know. They have come out and said, uh, as they're talking about the debt set, $27 trillion. But they say it's projected to rise to $78 trillion. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Okay, double. Yeah, it's going to hit $78 trillion. But it's not going to hit $78 trillion to 2040 or 2050 or, you know, something like that. Not according to Forbes. How about 2028? So in eight years. Now, just for perspective, okay, $78 trillion. It's so funny, right? You, see, you think about Trey. When anyone says billion anymore, does anyone even bat an eye? Oh, it's got the post office needs $25 billion in order to get everybody a ballot. Right? $25 billion, you're like, that's it? $78 trillion in eight years. So that's $51 trillion over an eight year period. So you're think an increase from 27 to get to 78. That's 58, 51 trillion, which according to Forbes, and and this is something I see absolutely happening. It, it's one of these things that blows my mind again because I don't, 
I'm not thinking about it right. It's only an increase of $6.375 trillion a year. That's what we would have to average over the next eight years to get to $78 trillion. When you think about this year, we don't know what the number is going to be. Four, five, right? Four or five trillion, maybe six. But this is what Forbes is saying. That's that's what we would have to average to get to $78 trillion. And when you start thinking about how would this happen, the answer is really quite simple. When you think about all of the kicking the can down the road, how many times? Kick it down the road. Kick it down the road. The post office is a great example, right? Just kick it down the road. Kick down the road all the pension funds. Kick down the road Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. And according to Forbes, they're like, listen, this isn't, they're not guessing. Right? They're just looking at charts and they're going back. They went all the way back to when Jimmy Carter was president and Ronald Reagan and the Bush and, and all the debt levels. And you think about interest payments and you think about all of the things, Fed balance sheets, all of these things. When a currency becomes unraveled, this is what happens. Somebody today actually, and I wish I had thought of it said you, they know where the inflation is. It's in, in debt. We've got debt inflation. And I thought, man, that's brilliant, right? I mean, that's really what we've got. I mean, think about it. What are we arguing about in Congress right now? Oh, we only want to spend $1.5 and get rid of the payroll tax for four months, which, by the way, you know, do some math. Which, you know, I, I, I like to, you know, I can do math. <laughs> Would be, don't worry, that's just another $350 billion. But, but they don't have to count it on the little number. That would actually go to the big number. And the other side saying $3.5 trillion. And you know what I'm telling you? We're going to get all of it. Every last bit of it. Maybe not all at once. But we are going to get it all. This is where the inflation is. And, you know, you think about the, the old hockey stick from Harry Figgy's book. This is it, man. I mean, Forbes magazine comes out over the weekend and says, hey, in 2028, the deficit's going to be $78 trillion. How, how, do you even, how do you even pay that? Right? Think about it. Even even if interest rates were at zero, just to roll over, it'd be an incredible amount of debt that needs to be bought. And here's the thing. Nobody wants it anymore. Right? And, I, and, and again, uh, do you, what do you want to do? You want to buy overpriced Wall Street? And I say overpriced because let's face it, it's crazy. We, we've got an economy that for all practical purposes is going to be down 5 to 10% when it's all said and done in 2020, which it's unprecedented. You don't see economy down 10%. Right? We have thousands, millions, not thousands, millions of people, millions of businesses not paying their mortgages, not paying their rents, not paying the leases on their buildings. Not paying the mortgages on their buildings. We have banks who by the Fed's own admission, this is the part that still kills me, willingly cheats on the stress test. Why? So they can issue more stock to the, to, to the elite. Right there, oh, well, we, why don't, why, J.P. Morgan, why did you cheat? Well, we want to give Jamie Dimon another 100 million shares. Well, I know, I know, I'm getting upset, I'm getting worked up. But doesn't it anger you? But this is, this is it, this is, we're in the super cycle. 
this is the thing. I, I, I wanted to avoid this. I was hoping that maybe, right, I could get out of this before it happened, right? I wanted to leave it to my kids. Joey and James, you guys deal with it. I'm out of here. Uh-uh, uh-uh. See, this was the cruelest trick of all. All these baby boomers, they thought, well, yeah, we left it to the kids and the grandkids. Ah, uh, no, 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 baby boomers. I mean, most of you, uh, you know, you'll be at the tail end of it, but we're all taking a bite of the uh, of the sandwich, if you know what I mean. And this is why, again, this makes sense. The dollar's getting ready for this next cycle. I think this is the last cycle for the dollar. This is it. Uh, over the weekend, China announced, and of course we've been telling you this, right? China's already been using their version of a digital currency. Over the weekend, they announced that they are expanding its use. In other words, hey, this is a gradual. China's doing the crawl before we walk, walk before we run. The central bank, we found out, the Massachusetts Federal Reserve, they, they finally had to tell everybody. Which really, in my mind, just means somebody found out and said, "Hey, we're making this. We're going. We're going with the story, right? We're going to print the story." And all of a sudden, our central bank said, "Okay, uh, we're working with MIT on the digital currency." And remember, uh, Daniel D. D. Martino Booth. She was over at the uh, uh, at the Federal Reserve of Dallas, and she called it the MIT Mafia. That's within uh, our central bank. What we don't know is what does this cost us? Right? So if you think about it, the banks have to lie to, to pass the, the stress test, which really means what? Our money's vulnerable because our banks are vulnerable. There's no such thing as FDIC insurance. I know they, they say there is. And if you were at Johnson Bank, then yeah, it'd be okay. I don't have any money to pay. If, could you imagine if J.P. Morgan or B of A or Wells Fargo if, if City, they went under, it'd be over. And then again, even if, let's just say, oh, well, don't worry, the federal government's going to put it all back. What's that money worth? What's it worth? What does it buy? We've already lost 99% of the wealth of the purchasing power of our hard-earned labor. And, and now we're getting ready to finish it off. And so the question really uh, now is, what is going to be the cost of the digital currency? What's it going to cost us? That part we don't know. Right? Will $10,000 be the equivalent of 1,000 electronic credits? Right? Will, will they just lop off a zero? Right? I mean, that'd be a great trick. Right? Hey, we had $78 trillion of debt in 2028. In 2029, it's only $7.8 trillion now. See, boom, lop it off a zero. Everything's fixed. I don't know. Are they going to do something uh, a little more, I would say, a, a little smarter? Which would be, you've got 10,000 Federal Reserve notes in your bank account. Now you've got 10,000 electronic credits. See? No harm. Look it. It's the same. Everything's great. Nothing changes. Your car payment doesn't change. Your credit card payment doesn't change. Your mortgage doesn't change. Your rent doesn't change. Nothing changes. Except for instead of it being Federal Reserve notes, it'll be Federal Reserve electronic credit. No change. But again, my friends, every time a currency collapses and they replace it with something else, there's the price to pay. And it may not change in 30 days. It may not change in 60 or 90. See, last time for us, it was 90 days. 
right? 90 days later, the price of gold almost doubled, really. It went from 20 to 35. Right? You got 20. Now it's worth 35. And, and that's how it's going to happen, right? All of a sudden, all of the, the bills, they'll just double, right? What was 1,000 electronic credits? Now all of a sudden it's 2,000. The problem is you're still making the same amount. Right? What was a two thousand four thousand? Right? What was four thousand eight thousand? And and this is this is kind of what what Forbes is saying. Hey, get ready. It was kind of like a few weeks ago. I had a customer in here uh, from Fountain Hills, and we were talking about silver. And I was like, Yeah, silver's going to thirty thirty five. I didn't even want to talk about 50 and beyond. But he got me thinking, and I'm like, man, right? That's absolutely what's going to happen. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Use words like, no, sir. Yes, ma'am. Back. 800 951 Gold's up uh, 50 bucks here, uh, right on the doorstep of $2,000 again, uh, and, and on its way to. Uh, well, that's unfortunately a lot higher. You know, and I think about what Forbes said. Seventy-eight trillion. We're at twenty-seven trillion. Twenty-seven trillion, we got two grand gold, right? At seventy-eight trillion, what are we looking at? Well, if we're gonna lop off a zero, when we go to the Federal Reserve, uh Federal Reserve credit, electronic credit, makes sense to add the zero to gold, doesn't it? Is that where we're headed? Uh, you know, is, is silver heading uh, to, you know, hundreds of dollars an ounce? You know, you start thinking about it, and you're like, that makes sense. All right? If, if gold's going to be, you know, and I said, hey, listen, don't be surprised. Gold could hit three grand this year. And the reason is simple. It's a, the inflation is in the debt. Look at what's happening. You see Warren Buffett, the guy who has for, well, Ever since I've I've followed news, it's probably somewhere in the nineties, mid to late nineties. Warren Buffett, I hate gold. It's just a rock and blah 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 blah. Now did he did he buy gold? No. But he did buy the best gold miner in the world. Matter of fact, bet it big. Well, God, why would you do that, Warren? What do you think, you know? Where, where does he think gold's really going to go? Because what, what's the only reason why you'd buy a gold miner? Because you think gold's going to go a lot higher. I mean, that's really the only reason, because there's so many reasons not to do it. That's why I said owning gold miner is not the same thing as owning gold. You have no idea uh, what how much gold's in the ground, uh, what the labor situation is, what's the cost of power, all these things, strikes and unrest and, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, a huge change even from him and again that's because what we haven't seen it yet we're seeing it this year and 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 i know a lot of us are still what you're still we're still in shock still in shock as to what's happened as we we have entered into a new debt super cycle we've entered into the next down cycle in the dollar and and we're just seeing gold and, and remember now the last time you, know, you think about the move in gold the last 10-year cycle, 01, 2001 to 2011, right? Gold went from 300 to 1900. The debt, though, it went from five trillion to, and I don't know exactly what it was in 2011, uh, but 10 trillion went from three to 10, maybe three to 11. Right, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, 3 to 12. Now we're talking about, we're going to go from 20, what, 20, what was it at the beginning of the year, 24? So over the next, say, say let's just say from 2019 to, to 2028. We're going to go from 20, 20 trillion to 78 trillion. 
800-951-0592. I mean, it's pretty simple. This is why you're buying it. Right? This is why, hey, I get it. Right? We, we, we kicked it down the road. We kept kicking the can down the road. The debts were going up a little bit. You know, then they're going up a little bit more and a little bit more. And, and now all of a sudden, right, and it doesn't matter. There's always a crisis first. Right? Think about when when the debts it real is shot up from that five trillion to the ten trillion. Well, we had a crisis. You know, we had the housing crisis and the banking crisis. Right? There's a, there was a crisis, and now we've got the Corona crisis. But did you notice the one thing that happened after the crisis? The spending just got worse. We're spending pretty much a trillion dollars a year after the first crisis. Now Forbes says, hey, we're going to probably spend about $6 trillion a year after this crisis. And this is why you're putting things away. I got a great special today. It's already been selling. So uh, the numbers are changing quickly. Uh, these are on your fractional gold. Uh, $5 Liberties and $5 Indians. The Indians, if you said, to, hey, Joe, what's the your favorite coin of all time, $5, and it's the best-looking coin we've ever minted, in my opinion. It's the one that they carved into, thought, thought it had the, the last plague, right, the, the 1918 flu. I've only got, I've got 26 $5 Indians at 605. I've got 66 Five dollar liberties at five ninety five. So five dollar liberties at five ninety five. Five dollar Indians at six oh five eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. You know how things have been going. Don't wait. We've been selling out of specials probably every other day. So if you want to put some more gold away. Uh, do so the dollar back under pressure. So we got the dollar back where it was when gold was threatening twenty one hundred dollars. Uh, like I said, gold's up fifty today. Silver's silver's twenty seven almost uh, twenty seven sixty right now on silver. Up uh, a dollar and a half. The Dow is split. The Dow is down fifty some points. The S and P and the Nasdaq are are up today. But again. Wall Street is banking on what? Money and bailouts. Money, bailouts, and, and who's going uh, to get the maximum amount of money for the quote-unquote corona vaccine. Uh, something else, the price of lumber through the roof. And again, here's the inflation. They keep saying there's no inflation, there's no inflation. Think about this. The world's in on the verge of another Great Depression, yet oil prices are in the 40s again. Uh Gold's hit all-time record high. Silver's on its way. Uh, the price of a lumber is gone through the roof, saying that the actual prices needing to be paid three times what the contracts were. So, you know, you got, you've got these paper contracts, and a lot of people, me included now, I think the paper contracts for commodities, there's a major adjustment that needs to happen or they may be going away. Because the, these these banks have been able to control the price for decades. And now they're losing control. And what's happening is in the cash markets. In other words, I need my lumber today. The prices are doubling. They're tripling. Right? We're seeing... Uh, the, the margins, if you will, the spread, if you will, on gold and silver. I mean, look at a silver eagle today, right? They say that silver is almost $28. You can't even sm sniff a silver eagle for less than 40 Yeah, same thing's happening in all of these commodities. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. 800-951-0592. Just type in an email here. So trying to do uh, three things at once, and it's not—it's <laughs> not working out. Uh, uh, 
all that well. So anyway, 800-951-0592, the $5 Liberties and the $5 Indians, 605 on the Indians, 595 on the Liberties. Uh, we had uh, a breakdown today. The dollar's broken back down, just like I thought it would. Uh, the, the, the looks like the debt markets are giving up as well as the the rally that was in Treasuries has collapsed this morning, uh, and it just makes sense. It's too much debt. Uh, un, un, it's unpayable. There's no way to pay it, and you start thinking about uh, And again, you, you, you don't want to think about it, but you have to. I mean, we, we're in a situation where we got massive revenue decline. Caterpillar. Worldwide sales down 20% in July. You know, in July was the good month, right? You know, everybody uh, was reopening until we weren't, and, and uh, uh, people still got stimulus checks and things of that nature, but down 20%. And really, that's really what it is. It's not a 10, 5% or 10% decline. It's 20%. And no amount of spending in the world can fix it when you, st- you don't have, uh, you know, really when you think about when you already have the, the amount of debt that you have and you're sitting there and you're thinking about all the money that's been created, and where's it going to go? Is it going into the bond market? You're not making any money there. You lose money. The actual real rate of return is already negative. They may say it's still, po- well, you know, it's still getting 0.6%. On a 10-year note, and on a two-year note, it may be 0.1, but at least it's not negative. It's negative. <laughs> Look at the price of wood. Look at the price of gold. Look at the price of silver. Look at all of these prices. Look at the prices at the supermarket. But yet, there's no inflation. And, and again, the inflation is in the debt itself. And this is what you're getting ready for. You're you're not getting ready for today. We're getting ready for 2028. You're going to be here in, in eight more years? Well, you better be ready. 800-951-0592. Uh, you know, and I was telling you guys about silver. And I was like, you know, $30, $35, and I had a guy in here a couple of weeks ago, and he's kind of pressing me about $50 silver. And I said, ah, you know, maybe, I, sure, it's going to get there. I don't know when. And it just got me thinking, and I don't know why I didn't, because sometimes, you know, you just do that. You just put up a block. But here I am telling all of you that, listen, it may not be this year. It may be next year, but gold's going to be 3000 in the next 12 months. And I think it's going to be shorter than that, but within the next twelve months, it's going to be three grand. Well, if, if gold's going to be three grand, then silver is going to be somewhere in, at a minimum in the forties, right? So, yeah, is, are we going to see new all-time record high prices in silver? Yeah, but the problem is, I don't think gold stops at three grand. I don't think gold stops at four grand or five grand. I mean, uh, at at ten thousand dollar gold, right? What are we gonna have silver at? I don't know, one hundred fifty ish, two hundred, right? twenty thousand dollar gold, right? Uh, probably see silver somewhere around three, four hundred bucks to the ounce. I mean, yeah, it's exactly what we're gonna be talking about. The price of lumber is going to be a small fortune, right? The house that already nobody can afford is going to be a million dollars for an entry-level home, right? The trucks, look at look at a new truck today. You know, a stripped down, uh, no bells and whistles, seventy grand, right? You wanna you wanna buy the uh, stretched out Escalade with all the bells and the whistles, right? It's one hundred twenty, one hundred thirty thousand. Not stopping there. It's not going to get cheaper, right? The central bank. Don't worry though. The central bank will do their job and tell you there's no inflation. Listen, Warren Buffett now is telling you 
There was a lot of inflation. Forbes magazine said, yeah, there's a lot of inflation. The price of gold and silver, all of it. Look at Wall Street, right? Got to remember, what is Wall Street? Debt market. People forget that. It's a debt market. Right? And, and, and it's all-time low. You know, the, the Dow is below it, but the NASDAQ's at all-time le- uh, record highs. The S&P's right at the all-time record high. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. And this is the thing as, the, as it happens, right? What breaks down, right? The, the financing and the servicing of the debts is what breaks down. And, and, and the banks that lied on the stress sets, all, everyone, they flat out lied. And the central bank said, ah, we're not going to tell. Because they knew. Well, if we tell, if we say it, well, people will know we've been lying. Because right? we didn't make too big to fail. We didn't make them smaller. We made them bigger. Listen, believe me. The book has already been written. Problem is, we're not, we don't have the book. The banks do. They know they're getting ready, right? They're transferring. A, they want it nice and orderly. Listen, and I'm going to tell all of you, we want it to be nice and orderly. Do I want our currency to be backed by gold again? Absolutely, I do. Will they do it? Not a chance. I'm not going to do it. That's why you need to own gold yourself. 800 592 Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment on a Monday. 800 uh, We're down to 12 $5 Indians. At least that's what I'm seeing here at 605 uh, The $5 Liberty still got about 50 of those. At five ninety five, at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two, the Indians. That's they're so hard to come up with. Uh, my guess is that'll be on a five dollar Indian. That'll probably be uh, another month or two before we see any type of quantities on those again. The five dollar liberties we've had really good luck with, uh, at least recently. Uh, those are at five ninety-five. The five-dollar Indians at six oh five. There's two lines available at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. If they fill up, just keep trying. We'll get to you uh, in the order that you that you called. Uh, but this is the problem. The problem is looking ahead now. Uh, the Social Security trust fund big trouble. Uh, and again, though, I knew, hey, listen, I've been telling you for the last three or four years, is 2025 is the number. Because there's always a crisis. I didn't know what it was going to be. right? But there always is. We, we know that 30, 30 million people that were paying aren't paying. Uh, the president wants the, the, payroll, the, social, the payroll tax to go away, at least temporarily. Uh, and I think, I'm hoping that he wins the election. So I think that's going to happen as well. Probably not this year. I think they'll get it done next year because they're desperate. Right? The money's not available. Uh, Forbes now saying this is the trend of the debt. This is what we can expect over the next eight years. So the next two presidential elections uh, the debt super cycle is here. Really, I guess you could say it started with Obama and then uh, picked up steam with Trump. Uh, and and I think the steam engine goes until they, they come up with some kind of currency debasement, which is a new currency. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see. And with that, here's what happens with that. right? They either do a straight devaluation, you know, the old lop off the zero thing, I think they're too smart for that. That would be people would be really mad. Uh, they're going to pretend like they kept you whole, whole, and then 90 days, 120 days, six months later, uh, the real effects of it are going to come into effect, and your purchasing power is literally going to evaporate, uh, and the gold markets are going to be uh, the only place to be. You know, those that hold the gold make the rules, and that's exactly what we're seeing. The central banks of the world uh, pouring into gold, uh, the the elite pouring into gold, and now even Warren Buffett. Now, listen, he'll sell that stock eventually, but even Warren Buffett getting himself some gold. Do the same today. The five dollar Liberties at five ninety five. The five dollar Indians 
at 605. That's if you want a pair, that's 1200 bucks for the pair at 800 951 0592. Uh, and we'll just see what tomorrow brings. Tomorrow, I'll try to get to California now and get ready. Listen, we haven't seen it yet. Wait till your property taxes. Uh, California now. I mean, they're already taxed to death. And how many Californians move into Arizona? Get ready. The elite tax, the uber rich tax now uh, being bantied about in California. I think it starts at $15 million there. But I'll give you some details on that tomorrow. Patriot Radio News Hour. Everybody have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow. Take care.